Hello and welcome to the next episode of Future You Friday. Today we are talking about how to show up authentically and with confidence, primarily, of course, at work and primarily as a woman in a male dominated sphere. But I hope there'll be kind of a couple of nuggets also for others watching this broadcast. So last week I talked about the misconceptions many of us have about confidence. And that actually ties in with what we're talking about today. So if you haven't seen last week's broadcast, I recommend you check out that LinkedIn Live too. Uh, it's called The Truth About Confidence. All right, before we get started, for those of you who don't know me or don't know what I do, uh, I am Mika Golbig. I'm a confidence and leadership coach and the founder of Golbig Coaching. Um, I help female entrepreneurs and professionals in male dominated spheres to create the confidence and visibility they need to take their careers to the next level and hopefully beyond. Why am I so passionate about this? My background is in corporate communications and primarily in the German luxury car industry, which you might guess, and you would guess right, is a rather male dominated field. Um, and when I moved to the US almost 10 years ago now, I, and especially coming to Seattle, I expected things to be so different in the tech industry. I expected this to be kind of an El Dorado for women and, and just like, yeah, anybody who is part of a marginalized group and, or maybe it was Seattle, the West Coast, the US, I had high expectations. And the more I talked, especially to women, uh, the more I realized, oh no, they're still facing a lot of the same issues. Still, and it's, this is 2021. Um, so I definitely, I'm very passionate about, just having playing my little role in changing this, in making women comfortable in power positions. And I really absolutely want to see women occupy 51% of all leadership and power positions during my lifetime, preferably while I'm still lucid. So we have work to do. All right, let's do the work. This particular LinkedIn Live is for you if you feel you don't belong, if you feel like you don't fit in, maybe because you are the only uh, woman or person of color in your role, in your department, in a certain setting. And if you are frustrated because you don't feel hurt, you're not being hurt. Maybe even insecure uh, because you don't, uh, you don't even make yourself hurt now just because of your experiences. And just a second. Um, yeah, so I hope this will be helpful for you. I will be sharing a couple of tips about where you can start right away to show up more authentically and with greater confidence in those situations that make you feel the odd one out, make you feel unheard. And uh, if you want to look more deeply into that for yourself, always feel free to reach out, send me a message, uh, book a call. I'll share a link with you at the end of this. I would really invite you to, to have a conversation because this is a really, really important issue in personal and professional development. All right, let's get started. I have five points for you and here's number one. There's nothing wrong with what you feel. It's totally okay to feel what you feel. There's nothing wrong with you. It's so important to say that first because you need to know, I want you to know that you are not alone in feeling disconnected, uh, not belonging, uh, frustrated, un invisible, not being hurt. There are many, many people who feel that way and you know what you're going through. Yeah? And it's okay to feel that way because it sucks, right? So, but what we tend to do is that we, these feelings, especially for those of us, and I, I'm sure that's you too, who are high achieving, 
hardworking. We feel resentment when we feel like this. Right? It's not pleasant and it's not, we know it's not helpful. So we feel resentment. And believe me, I totally know this one. But if you don't get to a point where you can accept that it's totally okay to feel this way, you will have a very hard time changing it. Huh? So unfortunately, acceptance is step number one to changing how you feel about your situation. And number two, that is another one that you might forget. There's a reason why you're in that room. There's probably, if you, if you're my people to person, there is probably a good reason why you're in that room. And I mean, let's say if you work, let's say for a tech company, man, there are so many people who want these jobs. It's not that anybody was doing you a favor or they couldn't find anyone else. There is a reason why you are in this room, why you're in this role, why you're on this project and you deserve to be there. And actually they can be lucky to have you there. Huh? Because you just have to look at all the recent studies on how diversity benefits teamwork, project work, and companies know that. Maybe not everybody around you may act like it, but companies know that. Huh? But you have the unique experience, perspective, and qualification for this role. And that's why you have it. There is a reason why you're there. And I need you to remind yourself of that, okay? When you feel unseen or unheard in your role. Number three. So now we're getting into the mindset work, which is my gem. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that eventually I'll turn around to, all right, we're looking into your brain and your brain only. That means, first of all here, separating facts from fiction and sticking with those facts. So example, a client of mine, uh, has had that experience several times that, that she made a suggestion in a meeting and it was ignored. And a few minutes later, someone makes the same suggestion, someone else and a guy, uh, and it's like praised and celebrated and of course, totally accepted. So now what she did and what we tend to do, because that's just how people are, is trying to get into the mind of that person. Is he copying me? Is he, is he, I mean, is he doing that on purpose? Is he doing that deliberately? Why is he doing that? And getting into the mind of maybe the chair of the meeting, the, the project manager. Why are they not listening to me? Why are they listening to that person? So you, if that sounds familiar, you're fully in the other person's mind. And that means also that you will second guess every little step you're taking. Huh? I, I know that so well. I used to do that all the time, coming out of a meeting and just like uh, running through everything and thinking about, oh, I should have said this instead, and, and that instead. And it took way longer to analyze the meeting than the meeting actually took. So that's why we need to get into our minds huh? instead of someone else's mind, because other people think differently. So trying to analyze their motives and, uh, and intentions and getting lost in that is usually a waste of time. What we can really work through is our own mind. That's a good use of time and that benefits us and that, that's what we should do. And that's where we start separating separate facts from fiction, from feelings, huh? because it's not the situation that's at fault. It's what we think about the situation, how we take the situation where we can make a difference, the first difference. Yeah? So what do you know? That's the question we're going with. Yeah? It's hard when you're upset and, and anxious and everything, but what do you know? First of all, about the situation. What do we really know? What's a fact about the situation? And then what do you know about yourself? 
about your skills level, about your expertise, about your experience, about your perspective, about your oh, all of these. And I would actually encourage you to write those down and make that an ongoing list, a, a success tracker if you want, no? a celebration tracker and read these things again and again and again, because we tend to forget them or just minimize them and play them down. And that's, that's really hurting ourselves. And when you do that list, maybe you're doing it today. How about you do it today? Start with that list. Uh, don't limit yourself to work experiences and work skills. Uh, include other things like from your private life, maybe something back from school or college, because last time I talked about how confidence is a transferable skill. So you might have done something in a very different context. Maybe, yeah, back in college, you might have done something that gave you a lot of confidence around a certain issue, and it's transferable to what you're doing now. That's why you really want. Uh, you really want to write down a lot of these things. Huh? Accomplishments, skills, experiences, expertise. Huge list. All right. And as a rule, that's another thing I wanted to say in that context with us getting into other people's minds. I really want to offer that there are very, very few people who are out to get you. Very few people do things specifically to hurt you. What most people do is they do what serves them best. And I guess you could argue now, why would I care if it hurts me? I think it does matter because if someone is really out there to hurt you, that's really me. While someone who does what serves them might not be aware of what they are, how, in which position they put you. That doesn't excuse their behavior, but I think it puts it in a different light and makes it easier to deal with. There are more steps uh, where we can productively work through that situation. Number four, that's my favorite and that's the most important here. Put together your personal, personal pep talk and whatever else makes you feel badass or makes you feel like the badass that you are, is actually what I wanted to say. All right, so what's the personal pep talk? I would suggest if you have a certain situation that um, is recurring, like maybe the meeting I mentioned in which someone picks up on your ideas, nobody listens to you, someone picks up on the idea and everybody's like, yay, this is great. Or maybe if you have your own, startup and you have to pitch pitching wow that's i mean that's huge uh especially if you're a relatively young entrepreneur and you have to pitch and there's maybe a room full of old white dudes that's hard and that's scary and if you have the feeling that they see your i don't know male co-founder and not you that might be a situation so whatever comes to mind that's the situation we're dealing with and for that situation we are putting together your personalized pep talk. And that is a process that has two steps. I actually use that this process when I journal in the morning almost every day because I'm so obsessed with it. It works so well. Um, but for the pep talk, two questions. How do you want to feel? And what do you have to think to feel that way? So let's say for, we keep it simple. Let's say the feeling you want is confident. You want to feel confident. So what do you need to think? What makes you feel confident? Write that all down as much as possible. And I can give you examples, but this has to be you, right? So it could be, for instance, I have run a successful project like that before. I know what I'm talking about. I am a star at pitching. Um, Whatever, yeah, but it has to be, it, ha it has to come from you because it has to give you that feeling of, I've got this, this is okay. Huh? 
and uh, that that is something you really want to probably i don't know be, be conservative uh, be, be be old fashioned print out and laminate or something because that is something you really want to have handy when this before the situation arises because when you're in that situation or getting into that situation you cannot reproduce it or you cannot come up with these things quickly so you want to have your pep talk available to you and the second part would be is the, basically a pet package. Uh, again, it has to be very personalized. Do you have your own, your song that makes you feel just great? Maybe it's something that raises your energy. I like to be, for me, being confident, feeling confident has to do with a lot of high energy. So I'm doing a little bit of superwoman pose and little John Travolta dance moves and stuff like that. But you might have your specific song, or you might prefer a more grounded energy. Your your sense of confidence is maybe more grounded, so maybe for you a little present, uh, a little meditation is part of the pep package. Yeah. So whatever it is, put it together, make it available at a click or as quickly as possible when you need it. And I mean that you have to put that together when you're uh, in a good place. Yeah because that's when you can feel that, that yeah, that confidence, that badassery uh, that you have to put into this pep talk or pep package. All right. And the last one, you don't have to do it alone. I'm serious. There are, it might feel very lonely, especially if you are the only woman uh if you are the only person of color in a certain setting it it feels very low but you are not alone there are tons of people out there who are going through very similar or the same experience and you can ask for help and before we talk about very briefly about uh, tapping into uh those people i would like to offer a reframe for asking for help because lots of us feel like asking for help is weakness. Huh? It's like, see, there's something I don't know. I need help that's weak. I would offer a reframe. Do you like to help? I mean, I know I do. And I remember from my in-person workshops, when I asked that question, every hand went up, everybody likes to help. And if, especially if it's very specific help, uh specific to what you do like for your to your expertise man it makes you shine and it makes you serve and it makes you feel really really good and there's nothing wrong with feeling good about helping someone it's totally fine it's a win-win in my book so shining and serving huh? that's what you give someone if you ask them for help that's the reframe i'm offering asking for help is giving others an opportunity to shine and serve and feel good about themselves. So specifically, I would always recommend to start identifying allies within your organization. Of course, if you are at one of the big companies, there are organizations within your company that may be tailored at your specific needs. If your organization is smaller or you, are at a, or you have your own startup, you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, um, it might be a little trickier to find women or, or people of color in the same situation, but think relatively broadly. It doesn't necessarily have to be a peer. It can be, it can be a mentor, an ally, a sponsor. Yeah? It can even be someone you mentor and talk about how you feel in these situations so that younger people realize, oh, that's normal. Lots of people feel that way. Huh? So just having these conversations and then, of course, tapping into the network that's available outside of your organization. And I don't have to tell you how to do your homework to to find your peers online and offline. But there are, of course, a lot of people out there that go through similar things and have similar experiences and sharing with them please make it a priority 
I know you might have a very stressful job and a couple of kids and, and a lot of other things on your plate, but make that a regular priority. Even if it's just for half an hour a week or something, please find the time because that puts us in such a different space. And then we can do this work on our mindset. Huh? Because sometimes you just need to talk about it without, without really working on it. And, but then afterwards it becomes easier. And of course, there's always the option to talk to a professional. This is, this is something I help my clients with all the time. This is really what I do a lot of times. So if you want a, a more personalized conversation about this, I'd be happy to help. No? So just send me, send me a message and then we'll just find the time to talk or go directly to mikagobik.com slash scheduling, mikagobik.com slash scheduling and book yourself a time slot for a short coaching experience and we can brainstorm a couple of things really to get you heard and feel good about it. I would love to help you with that. That's all I have for you today. I hope to see you at the next Future You Friday when we are looking in, uh, into how expectations, our own expectations, family expectations, society expectations, play into this topic of showing up authentically and with confidence at work. I hope to see you there, but for now, happy weekend.